Welcome back to another demo. Today we'll be exploring work hardening and annealing with the use of a hanger. Here we have the original hanger. We'll see that it's quite easy to bend. However, I'll now try to straighten it out to its original shape. And as you can see, it's quite difficult. Here we see the work hardening effect. The bar becomes harder with bending. The mechanical properties of the metal are related to its atomic structure. When the metal is bent, defects or dislocations occur. Their interactions with one another impede the flow of atoms which harden the metal. Defects and dislocations are now blocking one another. It's like a traffic jam. Having few cars on the road works and everyone can move. But with too many cars, a traffic jam occurs and everyone is blocking one another from moving. As ductile metal is plastically deformed, the number of dislocations increases and mobility decreases. Dislocation motion becomes difficult and yield strength increases. Work hardening can be seen in metallurgy to increase the strength of materials deliberately or even accidentally through rolling, hammering, and the processing of the materials. In the next part of the demo, we'll be talking about annealing, which is usually done after the material has undergone work hardening to prevent it from brittle failure. Annealing is heating metal and allowing it to air cool. Annealing affects strength and ductility. The metal softens from the heat and then the material is cooled. This reduces the number of dislocations so plastic deformation can occur much easier. Yield strength is decreased, our material now has reduced hardness and more ductility. This is a practical problem we face. A beverage can derives 70% of its strength as a result of strain hardening that occurs during its fabrication. This process is known as deep drying. When making pop cans, we start with a flat sheet of aluminum and turn it into a cup shape. It can work harden and this risks breaking the aluminum as it is now hard and less ductile. The forming process must occur in multiple steps of forming and annealing. Annealing improves formability and removes residual stresses. As the material is heated, internal stresses are relieved. This is known as the recovery stage. The material is heated above its recrystallization temperature, but below its melting point, and this causes new grains to form. This is known as the recrystallization stage. Finally, the grain growth stage is where new grains fully develop. By allowing the material to cool at a specific rate, the growth can be controlled. Thank you for joining me for this quick demo. I hope you learned something on the concept of annealing and work hardening, and I'll see you on the next one.